Alright guys, welcome back and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about strings. Now a string is just what they call text in computer programming and it's pretty much like a name, a sentence, any of that stuff. Now whenever you use text or a string you actually need to include it in between quotation marks either double or single. If you just try writing anything like Bucky Roberts on the screen it's going to say invalid syntax. In other words, it like thinks it's a variable or something if you don't include it in between quotation marks. So if you do that, you can type anything you want and it's good to go. Again, double quotes or single quotes, it doesn't matter. However, there are specific times where you're going to want to use one or the other. Now, one of those things is say you have a sentence like this. Um all right, I'm going to make a sentence that says, I don't think she's 18. Well, what these quotes mean is it's pretty much telling Python where to begin and where to end. So in this example, right up here, it started right here. It said, Bucky Roberts is awesome, and it ended right here because that's where your quote is. However, this sentence, it uses actually one of these quotes right after the end, this apostrophe right here. So Python is going to think that it starts here, stops here, and all the rest of this stuff it's going to get confused about. So whenever you have a sentence that does use a single quote, what you want to do is you want to put that in double quotes. So I don't think she's 18. Hit enter and it'll work fine. Now the opposite of that is this. Say that you have a sentence that uses double quotes like she said what part of the cow is the meatloaf from? Well, of course, this is actually a, a quote or a sentence and it uses double quotes. So in this case, you would want to surround it in single quotes. Easy enough. Now, another thing that you're going to need to do sometimes is what if your sentence has either double quotes and single quotes in it? Well, you can't just pick one or the other so what you can do is called escaping a character and I'll show you how to do that right now so actually let me see if I can copy this alright so in this example you see that it thinks it starts and stops right here however say that um, we have double quotes in here as well so we need to surround this in single quotes well what you can do is whenever it thinks it's the end and you actually just want to use it as part of your string right before the quote the quotation mark you can use a backslash and whenever you use backslash and then a symbol after it it pretty much means just treat this as normal text so then it's gonna say okay start here okay backslash this so that's just normal and end here boom so again backslash anything means it's a special meaning that says treat that as part of the string. Now, whenever we actually use, um, or excuse me, whenever we um, print strings out in our regular program, we're not just going to use the regular text. We actually need to use something called a function, and I'm going to be talking to you about functions later on. But the first function that we're going to learn is print. It's very easy. It's how you print stuff out on the screen. So press print, and that means print stuff out on the screen and now put two little um, parentheses. Now in between the parentheses, write any string that you want. So hey, now, brown, cow. So this is actually how we're gonna be printing stuff out on the screen whenever we make a full piece of software. So hit enter, pretty freaking simple. Now another thing I should probably mention is this. Sometimes you're gonna wanna, well, I'll show you an example and I'll show you guys um, the problem it causes and how to fix it. Say that we wanted to print out a path to, I don't know, some folder on our desktop. So what we can do is press, okay, where is it? C, uh, maybe Bucky. Should move my cursor out of the way. Desktop in, uh, you know, my naked pictures of our course in my nude pigs folder. So you are expecting it to print out this entire string right here. Hit enter. Okay, let's see what went wrong. It said Bucky desktop and then it went to a new line and said Ood pics. No, no, no. I'm trying to get my nude pics, not my Ood pics. My Ood pics. You don't want to see what's in there. So why is this? 
Well, you know how I told you guys that whenever you use backslash and something after it, it means something special. Well, in this case, and in programming, whenever you use backslash n, it means go to a new line. It has a special meaning. So what this does is it starts printing this out and it says, okay, backslash n, bump it to a new line, and then print the rest of it, which is ood picks. So that's what it did, bump to a new line, ood picks. But of course, whenever we use this in our program, it's gonna cause an issue because this is gonna confuse the program. So what happens when you actually want to print out this right here? Well, what you can do is right before your first um, little quotation mark, you can put R. Now what R means is print out the raw string with no special meaning. Just print it out as is, whatever is in between the quotation marks. So now you hit enter and check it out. So again, you're gonna use the R right before your strings a lot whenever you're working with file paths and other stuff like that. So now that we know the basics of strings and how to print them out, now I want to show you guys something else that's, uh, well, pretty cool in my mind. You can actually add together strings kind of like you can numbers. So let's make a variable called first name and set it equal to a string called Bucky and add a space after it too. So now not only can we store numbers in variables, we can also store strings in variables. So what I can do is say something like this, first name plus another string, my last name Roberts, and it's gonna say, okay, whenever you take a string and add another string to it, check it out, it makes an even longer string. So not only numbers, you can also add strings together. And another thing you can do is this, If you take that again and add another name like McLovin and hit enter, I now have a new last name. So that's one of the uses of how to add strings together. And I wanna show you guys something else cool. You're not only limited to adding strings together in Python. What you can do is you can also multiply strings. So if we have first name, which is Bucky, and we multiply it by five, check out what happens. What it does is it takes that string and it prints it out five times. So this is actually gonna save us a lot of work whenever we have to print something out repeatedly like people's names or anything like that. We can actually take a string and multiply it by some number to print it out that many times and have, instead of having to write like five lines of code. So I know that was a lot to take in, but remember, escape whenever you have to use a special character, whenever you're working with file pass, use R before it, which pretty much means raw string, and you can also perform mathematical operations on strings a lot like you can numbers. So thank you guys for watching. I'm tired out. I'm going to go take a nap. Actually, I'm probably just going to eat a Hot Pocket, but whatever. I'll see you guys in the next video.